Hey there, John Chorby here from ReallyEasyGuitarLessons.com and in this video lesson I want to show you 13 ways that you can play a G chord on guitar. So whether you are just starting out, you don't know how to do anything, or you have some experience, one of these ways of playing a G is going to be applicable to you. But really the whole point of this is to show you that all a chord is is three notes and what makes guitar cool is that there's a lot of different ways that you can play the same thing all over the neck. So by knowing how to find all these different ways to play a G, it's really going to set you up for one, being able to learn other songs and cool things. Because you can get away with playing the standard open position G chord for like strummy versions of songs. But, you know, if you are playing in a band or you're playing with other people, sometimes playing the exact same thing as the other person is boring. So I want to show you a couple of different ways that you could play a G. It's going to be great for your overall musicianship and finding where notes and chords are on the neck of the guitar. So let's jump in and get started. Okay, this first way is what I refer to as stupid simple, stupid simple chords. These are chords that I often teach to the brand new, the absolute beginners. So if you have just bought your guitar two days ago and you don't know how to play any chords, this G chord is where, you know, where you could start. So this is played by the G, B, and E string. You can use your ring finger on the third fret of the E string and just play the open G, the open B, and the third fret of the E at the same time and you got yourself a G chord. So there's the first way, stupid simple G. All right, the second way that you can play a G is what I refer to as the country and folk way of a G chord. So it's a standard open position chord shape, open position, open position meaning that it's taking place within the first three frets, and there's a combination of a fretted notes and open strings. So here, we're gonna put our middle finger on the third fret of the E, your index finger on the second fret of the A, the D string's open, the G string's open, the B string's open, and then your ring finger is on the third fret of the E. And that is a very common G shape used in country and folk music. You'll see it in rock um, occasionally, you'll see it in pop occasionally, but really where you see it the most, I believe, is in country and folk. And the reason why is because every G chord has three notes. It has the notes G, B, and D, all right? So if you look at what notes I'm playing, even though I'm playing six strings, I'm only playing three notes. That's a G, that's a B, that's a D, that's a G, open B, and then G again. So it's G, B, and D, it's just some of those, sometimes those notes are being repeated, okay? And then with the open B string, it's like you're accentuating the third of the chord. The G is the root, B is the third, D is the fifth. And the third of the chord is what makes it sound happy and bright. So you're accentuating it, which is very common, again, in country and folk music. The third way is what I would refer to as the rock or the alternative way, meaning you go from that country folk shape, move your ring finger up and cover the third fret of the B string, put your pinky down on the third fret of the E string, and you still have a G. Again, the notes are G, B, D, G, and then now here, that B string is a D, and then the high string's still G. So here, you're more accentuating the D note, which is called the fifth of the chord, and for whatever reason, you'll see this shape more often in, in rock, alternative, and pop and stuff. Not to say that you can't see it in country or folk, but more common, you see this version in rock and alternative stuff, and then you see this version in like country and folk. And the fourth way, which you really will see more in rock, is what I call the ACDC G, all right? It's not even really a G chord. It's more of a, what's called a G5 or a power chord. But here, you're gonna use your ring finger to hold down the third fret of the B and the E, and then just use your middle finger on the E, and when you do this, you can let it touch the A string, so the A string's muted. Okay? It's not really a G major, it's, again, it's more of a G5, but in a lot of rock music, especially with ACDC, you'll see this shape a lot. The fifth way is what I call the G coming from C, okay? So this one, it's, it's the exact same chord as the country folk version. It's the same notes, but different fingers. So this one, it's gonna be the third fret of the E string with the ring finger, second fret of the A string with the middle finger, and then your pinky, plays the third fret of the high E. Okay, so again, it's the same shape as this, just with different fingers. And you might ask yourself, why the hell would I ever use this shape when I could just use this shape? It's because you will, where you'll see this is like, again, in country and folk music, 
that's in the key of C. And if you know how to play a C chord or an F chord, the shapes of those chords look like that. And so it's easier to change like from a C to a G because you're using the same fingers, same shape that you put your fingers in, and you're just moving them up a string, okay? So this version is very common in songs that are country or folk in the key of C. All right, the sixth version of this, now we're getting into some bar chord shapes. This would be on the third fret of the E string, you're gonna use your first finger to hold down all six strings of the third fret, and then your middle finger is gonna to go to the fourth fret of the G string, your ring finger, to the third, sorry, the fifth fret of the A string, and your pinky finger to the fifth fret of the D string. And you're playing all six strings. Okay, so okay. This is a G major chord, it's a bar chord shape. Like I said earlier, there's only three notes in a G chord, G, B, and D. G, that's your root note on the E string. That note's a D, that's a G again. There's a B. There's a D again, and there's a G again, okay? So even though I'm playing six strings, it's still just the same three notes. You can hear, it's the same sound. Just a different little timbre. The timbre is different because of where, there's no open strings involved. All right, so that, that changes the sound a little bit. But overall, a G is a G is a G is a G. As long as there's a G, B, and D involved, you're playing a G major chord. And the seventh version of a G is gonna be kind of based off this bar chord. I just call it the Hendrix style, all right? So instead of barring it, I'm gonna take what's, so the notes that are being played on the D string, G string, and B string. I'm gonna keep playing those same notes, but I'm gonna play them with these fingers. So my first finger is on the D string of the third fret, my middle finger is on the G string of the fourth fret, and my ring finger is on the D string of the third fret. And then I'm gonna take my thumb and I'm gonna hold down three of the E, and, and while, as I'm holding down three of the E, I'm letting it touch the A. So this is what I call the Hendrix style because Jimi Hendrix popularized this, this chord form. So he plays like, you know, he played like this. Um, a lot of his uh, disciples, you know, John Mayer, John Frusciante from the Red Hot Chili Peppers, Steve Ray Vaughan, Mike McCready from Pearl Jam. A lot of pl players you will see will do there are major chords like this, okay? It's tricky to do because when you get your thumb involved, you're bringing it over the top and it, it can be hard to, to maneuver these fingers, especially if you're doing this like on an acoustic guitar. Could be tricky, but it's it's a useful shape, especially if you want to learn you know, any kind of Hendrix music or you know some of those songs by the artists that I mentioned because you're going to see this shape in here. So doing it at the third fret would make it be a G major. And then the eighth shape is really just based off what we're talking about. We're just talking about playing the G, B, and E strings here, okay? So this is what a, a, a little triad shape. Okay, so here I'm just taking the fourth fret of the G string and the third fret of the B and the E, just those three strings with two fingers. You won't really play like rhythm guitar with this shape, but you could do some some picking and then if you get when you to get into scales and you could use this shape to figure out what notes go around it all right so i teach that like when, when i talk about improvising and stuff like that using triad shapes is extremely valuable for improvising so it's worth to know you can just really base it off of the bar chord shape okay because it's it's all it's in there it's just a fragment of it okay so really these three the last three ways kind of go together the bar chord the hendrix style and then just the little triad stab at the at the top. And then now going up to the 10th fret, we've got another bar chord. This time the bar though is gonna happen with the ring finger, right? So your first finger is gonna be on the 10th fret of the A string, and your ring finger is on the D, G, and B string of the 12th fret. And I'm just playing from the A string to the B string. Once again, three notes in a G major chord, G, B, and D. There's the G. That's a D, there's a G again, and there's the B. And as long as I got those three notes, I got myself a G chord. And then the next shape, the 10th one, is gonna be based off of this. It's really just what I'm playing here at the 12th fret. And I can do that with either my ring finger or my index finger. I'm just playing those three notes, the ones that have been barred. Commonly referred to as the A shape, okay? Again, it's a triad shape, worthy to know, based off of the bar chord. 
but just taking a little fragment of it. And then the next one is also kind of built off that. We're just taking the G, B, and the G and B string that we just played. Okay, 12th fret of the G, 12th fret of the B, and then now using the 10th fret of the E. That can also give us a G chord, G, B, and D, there's the notes. And that's the shape. And again, this it would be more useful for, for kind of lead guitar stuff, especially when it comes to improvising. Again, like I said, triads are super important for getting better at improvising. And the last two shapes we're gonna have here, so this is the uh, 12th shape. This is gonna be what I call the C shape because you're making a C kind of chord with your, your fingers here. So here, it's kind of awkward to make. Your pinky finger is on the 10th fret of the A. Your ring finger is on the ninth fret of the D. Your index is on the seventh fret of the G. And your middle finger is on the eighth fret of the B. Okay? So that's another useful shape for just visualizing where stuff is. It outlines the shape of a C chord, but because we're playing it on these specific frets, I got a G here, I got a B here, I got a D here, and I got a G again. Once again, G, B, and D are all represented. And then the last shape is a D shape. Taking those, taking two of the notes I just played, seventh fret of the G, eighth fret of the B, seventh fret of the E, that's also a G chord. So how to go about practicing this? Here's what I would tell you to do. I would take one chord at a time and just commit it to memory, right? So committing it to memory would be, you know, you, you play the chord, you check it for accuracy. And then I, I do what I call press and release. You just press hard into the chord, right? Hard into the strings, rather. Hold the pressure, release the pressure, and then hover over the strings that you just pressed in. Repeat that for like a minute or two minutes and do that with each shape that you do. That helps cement the muscle memory of the chord. So I would do that first, just to kind of memorize where, you know, where on the guitar and what strings these, these things are played in. But once you get that, I recommend try to go through all of them, right? Where you just play them one at a time, right? Trying to get familiar with all the shapes, you know, try not to make mistakes like I'm doing here. Especially with the triads, right? The the three triad shapes that I showed you, just moving between them. And you're doing that so that you understand this is where I could play a G, right? These are all the spots and all the zones that I could play a G on. So you just start at the lowest part of the guitar, work your way up, and you're just trying to find all the spots that you could play a G. I guarantee you if you do that, you won't regret it. You absolutely won't regret it, and it will prove, it prove itself to be useful in the future. All right, that's it for this video lesson. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.